It is a truth universally acknowledged that a young woman in possession of a lovely morning must be in want of a cup of tea. Today, we're having tea with Jane Austen. Hi, I'm Jen from Tea Leaves in Tweed, and welcome to another historical tea session. This morning, I'm going to try to make a cup of tea in the way that Jane Austen might have enjoyed her tea. Now, we know from her letters that survive, as well as from the books she's written, that tea was a very large part of her life in Regency England. And while she doesn't ever give us a specific description of how she made a cup of tea, we do know some things. So I'm going to try to put them together today and make tea with Jane Austen. So let's brew. So here we have our brewing setup. I have a small china teapot to brew my tea in, my Regency Blue teacup, because that seemed appropriate, and a strainer for straining the leaves out of the tea as we pour it into the cup. Now we know from Austen's letters that she purchased her tea from Twining, which is one of the oldest tea companies still in existence. I have the Prince of Wales blend here because that is the only loose leaf Twining's blend still available that is entirely made from China tea. Because the large scale British tea trade in India didn't start until a decade after Austen's death, we can be pretty certain that she drank China tea. And in fact, she makes references to China tea in her letters. The other thing I have here is something that I don't usually have with my tea. It's sugar. Austin made several references to sugar with tea and seemed to think of the two as inextricably linked. However, in the early 19th century, sugar would have come in the form of loaf sugar which would have had to have been broken off with a tool called sugar nips, which I unfortunately do not have. However, I'm hoping I can make a pretty good approximation using my tea knife and a set of tongs from my gong fu set. So now let's talk a little bit about brewing the tea. So as I said before, there's nowhere where Austin actually gives us her recipe for making a cup of tea. However, if she had instruction on making a cup of tea from a reference, it likely would have been from one of the many books on household management that were written throughout history. So I found a reference from the year 1800 that has very detailed instructions on how to make a cup of tea using a small number of tea leaves to be economical, which sounds like it would have been perfect for a young woman who was not only in charge of making tea for her family, but also in charge of making sure that the tea did not get used up too quickly because it was still a little expensive. So, this reference, which I will link below so you can read it yourself, goes through some complicated mathematics about how much tea to use for how many people and how many cups of tea each person will drink. And it comes down to a suggestion of six teaspoons of tea leaves for a pot that holds nine teacups of tea. Now we know from my Isabella Beaton video that this little pot holds four teacups of tea, which is approximately half of the pot that is suggested in the reference. So I'm going to use three teaspoons of tea. This is a very traditional black tea. This is actually one of the first teas I ever drank because it was my mother's favorite blend. We of course drank this in tea bags when I was a child but it does hold some nice nostalgia for me. So then, the book recommends extracting the tea. So
similar to the way that Beaton suggested, by pouring on boiling water to about a third of the way up the pot and leaving that to extract for a quarter of an hour or 15 minutes, which is quite a long time. So I will meet you back here once our tea has extracted. Now my tea has been sitting for about 15 minutes. So now the instructions say to fill the pot the rest of the way with fresh hot water. It's likely that this brewing method came about as a throwback to the time when tea was considered a medicinal drink because it is brewed in a similar way to how herbal drinks would have been brewed to uh, tincture for a very long amount of time to draw out all the medicinal qualities. However, tea brewed for 15 minutes is not very pleasant to drink. So you add fresh hot water to warm it and to weaken it. So we fill our teapot up the rest of the way with fresh hot water and strain it into the cup. One benefit of this brewing method is it does give the tea leaves plenty of time to settle at the bottom of the teapot, so you don't get quite so many leaves in the strainer over your cup. Now, while it is possible that Austin took milk in her tea, she does not often reference bringing milk with the tea service. And in fact, at one point, she makes a reference to thinking well of someone because she doesn't take cream in her tea. So it seems that Austin may have looked down upon milk and tea. However, she almost always references bringing sugar with the tea service. So it seems that she liked a bit of sugar in her tea. So I'm going to have to break off a little bit of my loaf sugar. So we'll see if we can pick off a little bit with our tea knife. loosen to the top a little bit, maybe take some of it add a bit of sugar to our tea. And to go with my morning tea, I've also gotten myself a bath cake or bun. Now, these were a favorite of Austin, as referenced in her letters. And I found a recipe from 1805 for making bath cakes or buns, which is an enriched bread dough, similar to a brioche, but it also has caraway seeds in it. So here I have my bath bun, split and buttered and warmed. And I'm actually going to write a blog post later this week describing how I made these buns, if you want any more information about that. So keep a lookout on my blog this week. So, with Austin's favorite snack and a cup of tea brewed in the style of the early 19th century, let's try our Regency cup of tea. very familiar smell and taste. The brewing method does not, again, create a, an unpleasantly strong cup of tea, and a little bit of sugar definitely softens it a bit. Very warming, comforting cup of tea, and I think it will go perfectly with our bun. Slightly sweet, and they have the caraway taste. It's just delicious. So thank you for joining me this morning for Tea with Jane Austen.
and I look forward to doing more of these historical tea sessions with you. So I hope I'll see you again sometime. Thanks.